Hello and a very warm welcome to the next episode of the Joy of Basic Essentials with me, Matt Sexwish. Today I will show you a topic that I have uh, actually been dealing with recently and uh, I thought that it might be very useful for you too. Um, at least in case if you own a lot of acrylic paint as, <laughs> as I do. As you can see here, that's a uh, yeah, little overview on all of the paints. Uh, that I have. They are very different brands. So we have some P3 paints here, some Citadel Games Workshop ones here, um, some Vallejo paints. But uh, basically what's uh, quite important is to uh, yeah, sometimes have a look and kind of refresh them uh, yeah, to make sure that you can actually continue using them. And uh, I usually do that uh, once a year. So, yeah, in this time, for example, in between Christmas and New Year's Eve, or like right now, the very beginning of the year, I tend to like to sit down, you know, when the days get <laughs> darker and, uh, yeah, just have a look in all of my paints that, uh, that I have and see if they are still usable. So uh, these have already been refreshed, but I will show you, uh, yeah, how to how to go about it and uh, how to do this exactly. We will need to have a couple of things uh, before we start. Um, one of the things is, for example, this uh, Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver here, which is uh, improving the <laughs> the yeah the flow and like the consistency of the paint. Uh, it smells a little bit. Uh, chemical, <laughs> that makes any sense. Um, so it's actually doing some kind of magic within the, the acrylic paint uh, to make it more uh, yeah, liquid again and um, improve this one. But other than that, we will just use regular water like that. Then there's also uh, some sense in using uh, droppers like these here. Uh, you can get them very easily on uh, eBay or Amazon. Um, yeah, for, for a really reasonable price. So yeah, we will need them. Then also a uh, paper towel. You will need quite a, uh, to have quite a lot. So yeah, let's see. So I will just put, uh, put some of that here. So we will make quite a lot of mess, as you will see in a second, like that. Uh, and, of course, then we will need some uh, coffee steering sticks, the ones uh, from <laughs> your local <laughs> coffee place, or you can also order them on, uh, on Amazon or on eBay. Uh, and then there is also a needle. Uh, I use this really fancy, pretty one here. Uh, it's actually made of silver, so it's equally good for unclogging uh, dropper bottles as well as fighting off uh, werewolves and vampires. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, uh, oh yeah, and then you will need to have a, a piece of paper and, uh, uh, and the pencil because with this we will write down all of the paints that we need to uh, to reorder. So what I usually do is I write down, for, I start with one brand. Uh, in this case we could start with P3. So I write down P3 and then um, yeah, I just uh, start to go through the paint. For example, here we have um, this man of white highlight here. And right away I see that this is quite light. So um, if you have a hard time actually opening these up, uh, as I sometimes have, I use the back end of a, of a brush, wedge it in here, and that's, uh, that is how you can open it quite easily. And as you might be able to see, this one here is, well, done. It's empty. So um, yeah, I will just put this aside and write down P3. And it's quite important actually, so can also put two exclamation, mark, exclamation marks here. Uh, Moro white, uh, Moro white highlight. Okay, first one, and this one, uh, yeah, I will dispose it in. Well, actually, in is this is acrylic paint. It's not uh, super toxic, but there are special places that accept paint, so uh, I will get it there. All right, let's see. For example, this is Jack Bone here. Same thing, Oop. opening it up. And I'm wearing also gloss because sometimes yeah, you can get uh, quite a lot of paint on your fingers. So uh, yeah, so this paint, for example, is um, yeah, still doing pretty well. Um, the only thing that I could do now is, for example, take a little bit water here from the dropper. Not too much, just like around 10 drops or so. 
And then I take one of these coffee steering sticks. And what I do is I also scrape uh, the paint that is in the lid down a little bit like this. Um, here you can see there, yeah, there's also this residue. So I can do it like this. Put it in here. Sometimes it's also um, it's also good to determine whether or if if a paint is too dry. Um, you can still use it for certain techniques. So this one here is, for example, just refreshed and, and, and new, good as new. But um, let me think. Maybe I have uh, maybe one of these old bleach bones here. Ah, uh, this here is actually still needs some refreshment. Oh yeah, for example, like this here. Uh, if you look in the lid, um, the paint that is here is actually quite dry. Um, so this will not be ideal to use for um, for a technique like uh, standard layering or um, glazing, but it will be really good to uh, to be used for dry brushing. So on a paint like this, I would usually uh, write a little D somewhere, like on here. And now I know that this paint here is uh, actually good still for dry brushing. So when I have all of my paints arranged like that, I see that some are more dry. So I, yeah, I just add a little D and now I know that this is a uh, dry brushing paint. Uh, you will also notice that I have put some color on the top lid of all of my, uh, of my paint here. That's, uh, as I explained in an earlier video, it's very important for me to see the exact properties of my paint. So I, um, in this step also, when you know when we have stirred it, uh, there's still quite a lot of paint on the on the painting stick. So what I usually do is I try to scoop that up a little bit like that, and then I use that to also refresh these, uh, yeah, these these lid colors here. Just put it on top. Um, it might also be good to sometimes to put uh, some foundation on uh, on top of that lid here beforehand. So you can uh, judge the paint a little bit better, like see the, the colors a little bit better. I've done that, for example, with these big pots here of these uh, Vallejo model wash uh, paints. So before applying the, um, the model wash paint, I added some just like pure white in, I think, two or three layers even on top of that. Uh, I've also seen people just spray um, with white foundation on top of the paint, but I think it's a little bit messy. So <laughs> I um, still do this white part with, with my brush. Uh, one thing that's also important, keep that in mind, um, start out with the brighter tones. That way you will um, be able to, to change the water way less frequent. Because when we refresh these paints, of course, we will need to have quite uh, clean water. Um, otherwise, for example, if I now use some blue or some green here um, to, to refresh that uh, and then add maybe also the paint on the top of here, then I clean my brush. There will be some pigments in here and if I would be then uh, um, to refresh for example um, like the screen tone here there would be some influence and some color in uh, in that paint uh, also in the refreshment so that is not good. Um, I can also recommend you to use uh, a couple of these cups when you do this refreshment thing um, so yeah you always make uh, have, have uh, very very clean water when you need it. Um, that is also quite a good tip, I think. Okay, um, yeah, so we would go through all of the paints, like the brightest first, like the white ones, then the cream tones, then the yellows, then the um, the ochre tones, uh, and then you know just follow like a uh, following like this uh, like a color wheel, so to say, is also quite a good idea from bright to to, to dark. So then you know you go red. Uh, the, um, the browns are actually quite dark, so uh, then you could decide on going to, um, for example, the, the purple, uh, blue, then the green, then the browns, and then at the very end, the, the black tones. Um, it's also, you know, quite interesting then to see the result. Uh, for example, here I have all of the black tones that I have in my repertoire. And um, that's not, maybe you can see that, but this one here is the matte black. And then they have the we have the more satin um, Tama black from P3, for example, here, and the Vallejo ones. They are like they have different properties, but it's really great to see the paint that you are using on the lid 
um, sometimes also like allow it to overflow like this so you can um, you can really judge the the tone of your paint uh, more easily all right so um, let's see uh, how we deal with a color that is also quite old uh, here we have one of the finest colors that I'm really struggling to find a substitute actually for uh, the Citadel Scaly Green. Um, it's actually not in the, oh no, this one actually, I have two. <laughs> but um, here I can show you what uh, you sometimes find in a in a pot. It's like, <laughs> wow, that's, that's really, really, really dry and really, uh, yeah, beaten up paint. Um, there's not much you could usually do with water for something like that. It's a little bit tacky, which is important, but um, some paint is just, it's just dead and then we just sort it out but sometimes when it's in this state uh, water will not help but you will need to have something uh, yeah harder so for this case we have this um, Vallejo airbrush flower improver here um, it's actually uh, also like acrylic based it's not um, you know for example uh, alcohol based or anything so this here I will just add some amount of it like it's hard to describe how much but um, so so that all of the acrylic paint is kind of covered like this should be enough and I will leave that actually to uh, stay like this overnight so I will then clip, uh, close the clip close close the lid that's the, <laughs> the word and um, put it aside overnight and then <laughs> I've prepared something as in, in a good cooking show uh, this is also a scaly green which was very similar to this one actually and you will see voila the uh, flow improver has done its magic overnight and we will then be able to take one of these uh, steering sticks here and then also like make some some holes here it's so much softer actually now and we will just start to yeah to mix this together like this and you can already see on the stick that this has really refreshed our paint so it has kind of revived it <laughs> like uh, some paint necromancy <laughs> this is actually great you know to to see uh, paint that is out of production uh, yeah that you can actually bring it back Oops, from the dead <laughs> uh, that being said like this paint is also um, when even when this will be all done uh, it's not uh, comparable comparable to a fresh and new paint um, it will always be a little bit weird. We we'll have these bits in there, uh, swimming in between the the more liquid portion. So actually, this is like the the last thing that you can do with the paint, uh, and just a little bit like an emergency procedure. You will not be able to paint really well with it. But you know, this is just a little like for example, uh, dry brushing is also possible, but. Um, it's quite it's, it's quite difficult yeah because you have these like uh, bigger chunks also still in between the paint but yeah you can see it actually it's when you do that on your wet palette and just kind of uh, make sure that all of the chunks break up you can actually achieve a really good paint consistency all right so this is what we would do with this paint and then there is also some uh, some paint that you open up and just know that okay this paint has actually this is has dried entirely up so this is not going anywhere so what I would do with that is just note it down for example uh, that's the Wazdaka red uh, so this would be also Games Workshop uh, a paint that is to be bought this goes away same goes for any paint there where the lid is damaged for example here the p3 rucksack tang um, yeah sometimes the um, when you open a lid like this um, yeah the lid just cracks and um, what you can do then sometimes is if you have a second uh, one then you uh, like swap it change the color in a pot that is still good they also do those mixing pots that you can use um, but that's uh, that's about it like a damaged pot will always be some trouble all right and then um, let's see also how we do 
about these uh, Vallejo dropper pots here. Um, yeah, maybe let's see if I can find one that is uh, clocked. Oh, this one is good. Uh, da -da, let's see. Uh, maybe is this one here clocked? No, this one is also good. Oh, this one is also <laughs> nearly nearly new. Damn it! <laughs> I've I've worked too 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 well last time. Uh, so I don't have clocked paint anymore. So maybe we just kind of. Oh yeah, this one's nicely clocked. Nice. All right. So sometimes you have these um, these Vallejo dropper pots when you know that uh, you want to put paint on and nothing's coming out. That's most of the case. Uh, like most of the uh, not most of the times, that's the case if the um, this here has uh, blocked up with pigment. So for this, I have this needle. So what I usually do is I actually remove this here. Okay, like this. And then I take the needle and punch. Oops. Oh yeah, there you can see it. Punch, punch the uh, punch in the hole, and there is the culprit. <laughs> it's actually clogged um, pigment mixed with medium. So yeah, we do this. Looks good. And same procedure here. We add two or three drops paint depending on uh, on the consistency in there start to mix it up like that scoop this little stick here to the sides and also oops yeah remove the paint here put this back on sometimes it's also quite loose so you might also add some uh, for example some uh, cellophane foil or something that makes this um, this diameter here a little bit smaller and then kind of press it in to seal it uh, thoroughly. It's also something that, you know, some people, they really push hard with their paint and then they have a little uh, accident on their palette. Um, it's also good if you if you push like too hard usually and have this accident happened to kind of reseal uh, this part of the paint. But you can see like paint is coming out really nicely now. Um, what I usually do is also little droplets here of the original paint. Close it, and this one here is done. Okay, if you're really, really meticulous, you can also um, yeah, write down the, the um, how much is in every single paint, uh, how much paint is still remaining. So you could, for example, do something like a scale from, I don't know, one to five or so, or one to six, I want to one to four. And then you can also, you know, draw in, okay, this here is three quarters full. Um, then you will end up with a nice list of your paint and you will always know when you head to the store, for example, uh, how much how much of the paint you will still have, which one you will have to rebuy. And there are also very useful apps for that um, that you can uh, find online when you can kind of just, you know, scan in or like, mm, yeah, type in the paint that you have and see how much uh, still left in there. Okay, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I don't think that there is uh, much more to say. Um, a pass like this usually takes, um, yeah, takes some two or three hours if you have as much paint as you can see uh, see here. Um, it's quite a lot, but um, it's also good to know that not all of the paints have the same uh, medium, so to say. So sometimes some manufacturers have a specialized medium for their paints. Uh, you can also use that to have a really, really good um, yeah, refreshment. Some paints like this one here, they are alcohol based. So this would be an entirely different setup. Um, yeah, and then at the end you will end up with a, with a lot, like a pile of sticks, uh, a lot of mess. And yeah, just clean that up and you will be uh, good to go. Okay, I hope that you find this uh, tutorial useful. Um, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Uh, make sure to also subscribe to <laughs> my YouTube channel if you like it. And yeah, see you for the next installment very soon. Have a great day. Goodbye.